Hi, my name is Bill Monroe of Project Portfolio Excellence Incorporated. In this short video, I want to lay out a process that will allow you to effectively test software project deliverables. In Project Portfolio Excellence, we have what we call truths of project and portfolio management. And truth number 51 states that once poor quality gets into production, it's tricky to trace, costly to correct, and difficult to delete. Now before we get into the actual process, I want to give you a few thoughts as to what I think software testing is and what it is not. First of all, software testing is your last line of defense. If uh, quality problems get through the software testing process, then they end up in your production environment. And when that happens, it's bad because then it becomes rework. And every hour spent on rework to fix quality problems that should never have gotten there in the first place is an hour that's taken away from future project work that could be adding more value. Secondly, software testing is not a proactive approach. Software testing is analogous to end of process inspection. Uh, any poor quality that exists in the product has already been built in and so it becomes rework to try and fix it. Uh, it's not quite as expensive as trying to rework something that's already been put into production, but it is more expensive than doing it right the first time. Now if the problem that you find happens to be a coding or a uh, programming problem, then that might be pretty easy to fix. On the other hand, if the problem is one in which there's uh, a requirement that wasn't captured early on, that's a worst case scenario because you may even have to go back and redesign your solution to account uh, for the missed requirement. Now lastly, you can't test quality into a product. We said before that software testing is not a proactive approach. It's much more cost effective in the long run to make sure that you build good, solid processes around the definition of requirements, the design of solutions, and the development of deliverables. Okay, I'm off my soapbox. Now let's talk about the process for effective software testing. Every project starts out as an idea in someone's head. If we spend some money, if we invest some time and resources, then what we get in return for that investment will provide more value to our company than what it costs us to do it. That idea becomes an initiative that the sponsor or the stakeholder takes and presents to various people throughout the company, and if there's enough support, then presto, we end up with a project. Now once the project has been approved for execution, we've got to figure out how we're going to make the vision into reality. That is the purpose of business requirements gathering and definition. This is also the first chance we have to take the wrong step, to make the wrong move, because if we miss requirements during this process, then we end up in a situation where we can't accurately determine the scope, the schedule, or the cost of the project. That's why so many projects end up taking longer than was expected, costing more than was expected, uh, not returning the value that was expected, because during the business requirements gathering process, certain things were overlooked when they should have been captured. As you're creating and documenting your business requirements, one of the questions you need to ask is, how are we going to test this? Business requirements are tested during user acceptance testing. That's where the business users do the final testing on the deliverables to make sure that they fulfill the specifications that were given to IT for the development of the system. As we're creating UAT test cases, we want to make sure that each test case ties back to a particular business requirement. This is ensured using the traceability matrix. Now, traceability matrix might be nothing more than an Excel spreadsheet, but the important thing is we don't want to have any business requirements that don't have associated test cases, and we don't want to have any test cases that don't tie back to specific requirements. In order to do effective software testing, you have to have a strategy, a plan, and a schedule. The plan and the schedule will probably be influenced more than anything else by the number of test cases that have to be executed. The strategy might come into play if, for example, the testing environments aren't what they need to be or you don't have as much time as you would like to have and you want to try and create a strategy that will make the best use of available resources and time to get the best results from testing. The testing strategy, the test plan, and the test schedule serve to organize the test cases. Now on this particular leg of the effective software testing process, UAT testing is the last thing that takes place. 
UAT testing is performed according to the test strategy, the plan, and the schedule. And the last thing we want to note on this leg of the process is that UAT testing validates that the business requirements that were specified have been adequately fulfilled. Okay, up until now we've talked about the activities that the business is going to be responsible for leading up to user acceptance testing. Now we're going to look at a parallel leg in the effective software testing process that's owned by IT. And this starts out when IT is given specifications from business and they turn those specifications into a product design and into technical requirements that will fulfill that design. The types of testing that IT performs may differ from company to company, but some of the more common ones are unit, system, integration, and regression. Each of these types of testing could have unique test cases associated with it. The concept of traceability is just as important for technical requirements as it was for business requirements. However, many companies make the mistake of thinking that one traceability matrix can be used for all levels of testing. The truth is that every testing type may have a unique set of test cases and therefore may require a unique traceability matrix. The testing that's done by IT during the development process will have its own strategy, planning, and scheduling components. Strategy, planning, and scheduling organize the test cases for the various levels of testing that IT will perform. Unit, system, integration, and regression testing will be performed at various stages of the development process. And just as we saw with UAT testing earlier, these various levels of testing will be done in accordance with our strategy, our plan, and our schedule. We should also note that the various levels of testing performed by IT validate that the technical requirements have been fulfilled. This concludes our review of the process for effective software testing. You may look at what's been presented here and think, well, that's just too complex, it would take too much time, it would be too expensive, and all of that is fine, but the one thing that you have to accept is that this is what it takes to effectively test software. If you choose to ignore any of these steps, you will add risk to your project and you will increase your probability for project failure. Now the fact of the matter is most companies do not follow this process to the letter even though many companies think they do. Then again another fact is that as much as 70 percent of the time our projects fail to meet their objectives. Many of these failures occur because testing was not properly managed and executed. When you make a decision that could ultimately affect the quality of your product you need to make that decision strategically not just because you don't know any better. Now a little bit about Project Portfolio Excellence. Project Portfolio Excellence is a set of tools, techniques, strategy, and methodology for the evaluation, selection, and management of enterprise software and software related projects. I mentioned early in the presentation that Project Portfolio Excellence consists of a set of truths. The number one truth of PPE is the causes of project failure are easy to diagnose and simple to understand. Now that you've learned more about the testing process, you should have another tool that you can use in the post-mortem analysis of any projects that have failed in the past for your company. I hope this presentation uh, has been helpful for you. I hope you've learned something new. If you have any questions or comments about the material that I've presented here, feel free to send them to me via email or phone. You can also call to set up a free consultation. We'll discuss your goals and needs and whether Project Portfolio Excellence can help you get better results with your software and software related projects. If you'd just like some more general information, you can visit the website at www.projectportfolioexcellence.com. Thank you for listening.